She is just a little bit gusty out this morning. I think I probably picked one of the gnarlier days of the early fall season in Massachusetts to do some saltwater fishing. But from what I've heard and what I've learned, saltwater fish don't really mind the cold weather here. Stripers, bluefish, even tuna, they don't mind colder weather. So while I am fully decked out in fall gear, I don't think these fish are gonna be too partial of the wind. So we are going to do basically a bank fishing mission, but strictly for saltwater fish today. We are in Skatituit something, I can't pronounce the name of this town, as I can't pronounce most Massachusetts towns, but I'm excited to try something new today. Stick with it, stay tuned, and as always, Enjoy. Alright, we're gonna start off with the old reliable, a little jerkbait action. Lucky, you're just gonna have to watch on top of this rock and let me know if anything busts. Okay, you're gonna be my eyes for today. Let's give this a go. Pretty deep over here, honestly. A lot deeper than I thought. Oh, what the f Either there's rock out there, I just got that. Where, 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 where? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Where are they at? Oh, they're all, oh, those aren't very big, but I can try. No, just try. Get close. I'm on, there we go, I'm on. Yes, yes, I'm on. Get in here. Oh yeah, striper I think. Oh, he just pulled off. That was a striper, he just pulled off. It wasn't giant, but it was a fish. Come on. Yeah, that's a pretty decent one. Oh, I just got bumped. There he is, he's on. Yes, it's a fish, that's a good one. That's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, that's a lot heavier than the ones I was catching. Come on. Yes, baby, let's go. <laughs> it's getting lucky. It's getting very lucky. <laughs> Is it a striper or a bluefish? Knowing my luck, it's probably a bluefish. No, it's a striper. Hell yeah. Come here, come here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Well, that was my first striper. He decided to uh, pull an escape move and go down the rocks. So, see you later, striper. They're still there. There's a, there we go, I'm on. I'm on, yes sir. Another one. Doesn't matter the size this morning, just something to get us kicked off. Yeah, that one's not too shabby. Got him. <sighs> yes, dude. <laughs> How gnarly is that? So I was over on uh, that side of the jetty, right behind you guys, and then Alex over here just tossing around a swim bait, kind of looking for some shallower fish. All of a sudden, I hear him. Oh my god! Oh my god! He can't even say what he was like trying to like say. He's, just, he's like fumbling over. So I go over on the other side of the rocks, and I'm like, no way! I go over here, and they're like actually busting pretty hard. And I originally thought they were just little bluefish, but upon further investigation, we found some stripers and a pretty good one too. The funny thing is, is um. I guess the sad slash funny thing is, this is probably my biggest striper of the trip thus far. But I haven't really been trying super hard for these guys. I've just kind of been fishing jetties on solo missions. So to pull a fish out like this with little to no homework is uh, it's a pretty dope feeling. And they're just such badass fish. I'm throwing a big swim bait right now and they are loving it. <laughs> Good little striper. First one of many, I'm hoping. All right, big release for the first striper. This is a huge moment. Thank you, guy. Woo! Big splash. Big tuna comes up and eats him. They're busting, they're busting. They're coming out the rots like freaking dragons. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's hope this is a bite. Dude, they really, oh, I'm on again. I'm on again. Dude, they're eating so good right now. You don't need to cast that far, Alex, get out there. Unless you wanna film, you probably should film. What am I saying, you need to film. Oh, yes. This is so much fun. Striper fishing, micro striper fishing on random jetties. Another little schoolie striper. This one's wide. It's so funny how you can get one that's built like really long and lean, but sometimes you get them and they're just tall. They're honestly such different fish. Second striper of the day, literally second cast after my first one. Gorgeous fish, man. Oh, this is fun. Jetty fishing for stripers, big release. 
Just a little disclaimer for those of you guys probably freaking out at the, at the giant rock release. These are some of the hardiest saltwater fish I've ever caught. That guy, that was like a, that was like a cannonball for him. He'll be all right. Anyway, let's get back to fishing because there's still some out there, I think. Where'd that go? I didn't see it land. You're on? Yes! <laughs> is he still on? Yeah. How's that fight? Dude, that rod is so much fun. There we go, that's it. Not close, not quite there. There we go, I'm on. Yes, on the light action. Yes. Switch to the small rod, just something a little bit more sporting for these stripers, and that is a lot better fight on the 7.6. That's actually not a terrible one. That's maybe the biggest one I've caught today. Oh yeah, that one's not too shabby. A little stripey schooly. I'm gonna play it risky, go down there and grab my fish, claim my prize. Okay. Oh yeah, that one's quality. Oh, they're going, why is it every time that the camera turns on, they're busting behind me? Anyway, this guy uh, ate a little tiny nomad. I think it's an Australian company. But this is a little bait that I fished when I was in Australia. It's a nice little glide bait. I wanted to kind of match the size of the fish we're catching. So I put down the 9.6 and I picked up the 7.6 and that was an intense fight. That's probably my biggest now. We are upgrading today. Got the biggest a few casts ago and then now I think this one trumps it at a, at a whopping 20 inches. <laughs> Does not matter though. It's a freaking nice flurry going on get this guy back and go catch some more nice soft gentle release okay Alex is back in the car right now getting a battery for the big camera in the meantime I want to show you guys how I am setting up my rig and again this is all from the perspective of a non striper angler so what you're gonna see here probably isn't the norm but it is what's working today so therefore I kind of want to share my uh, my thoughts and opinion. The rod and reel are simple. I'm using a 4,000 size spinning reel. It's got like a five to two one gear ratio. And the rod is a seven, six medium heavy. I would call it more of a heavy. It's got a soft tip. I would say like a fast tip more or less. And, and on that reel, I've got some 20 pound, I think actually 30 pound fluorocarbon. This is the setup we were using in Australia for barramundi, which are very similar natured fish. They're aggressive. They go hard, they eat top water, so on and so forth. So I figured this setup would be perfect for, for both fish species. That's what I'm using. I'm then taking a little barrel swivel and I am using Using that as my connecting point. Now I know a lot of people like to do FGs and blood knots and Albrights, but for me this is just super simple. I feel like with the barrel swivel you have a little more leverage if that fish turns. I don't know if you guys notice this, but stripers kind of had that same mentality as a catfish. It's like they like to roll when they're in one place. So I'm taking this and I'm tying like a pretty heavy duty line knot. What I'm trying to basically do is connect 40 pound mono to my 30 pound braid. Tying a very simple knot here. Juicy. Then I'm clipping that and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of debate as to how much leader you need for striper or if, or if you need leader at all. The first time I went striper fishing, I didn't have any leader. I was doing a 30 pound braid to a straight barrel clip swivel. So I guess it all depends on the nature of the fish. We are fishing clear water right now. It's a very public spot. I'm sure these stripers have seen lures before. So I'm just doing my best to maintain a low key presence. It's about two foot leader. And I, and I like using these little clips. I don't know what the name of these clips are. It's like a 50 pound lure clip and it makes changing lures really easy. And nothing is worse than trying to retie as the fish are busting. So making this as seamless as possible and finding a way to switch baits easily without having to actually clip the line, I feel like is super imperative. So there's our leader. You've got the barrel swivel matched with that 40 pound mono, which is about a two and a half foot leader. Then you've got the snap swivel on there and then you've got the bait and then we're gonna tie this whole thing to our braid. Nice little tutorial for you guys. I don't do enough of these kind of how-tos and if you guys don't like them, just skip over them and we'll get back to fishing. But there you have it. That right there is a, uh, is a novice striper setup. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but it works. So I figured I'd share it with you guys. Okay, let's go get another one. I, I'll be surprised if they're still out there. That was like a 15 minute break. Oh my gosh. Nah, I spoke too soon. I'll be surprised if they're out there. Boom, there's another one. There's one, I'm on again. Wow. Dude, I'm working it so slow this time. I think I've figured out the fact that like, this water's cold, we've had the cold front come in, and these fish don't want it that fast. I literally let that thing sink. There, there must be a little hole right there, man. Yeah. Or we must be casting right on the edge because it's the same spot every single time. There's gotta be a big one around here. Yeah, throw it right there, it might have a fall. Oh, so much fun. I love it. I love it. There you go. See you later. Oh, there we go. Let it sink. I was letting it sink on that one. 
Yeah, I was gonna say you're right on top of it. It does. Maybe I'm working too fast. You're on. That one looks pretty good. What is that? It's a good one. You have a pretty decent one. <laughs> They're back. They're freaking back. Well, I'm pretty much at a loss for words. That was by far the most intense morning we have had yet this entire month. Stripers like that just get me going. And that's honestly one of the things I wanted to do when I came here to New England was to figure these fish out for myself. Eventually, we'll work our way up to some pigs, some slobs, some brutes, but it's good to get started on a nice little public jetty like this and catch just a flurry of them. That was so cool. But like all good things, it has come to an end and uh, we are faced with the stinky, gross, low tide, which actually can be pretty decent fishing sometimes. But right now it seems to have shut the bite off. The flat that we're fishing right now is soon gonna be completely dry. That's the one thing that blows my mind about saltwater fishing is the spot that you're catching fish on could be completely dry within a matter of like an hour. So we're, uh, oh, it's getting windy. We're gonna uh, head on out of here. We dominated this rock, we caught fish. The goal now is to fish some new stuff. We're gonna go grab some breakfast, wait for this tide to turn, and then head back out onto the water to go find some more hungry fish. Hopefully, maybe, like I said, if we're lucky, we should find some more productive water as the day progresses. But if this is our stepping stone and our ground level up, I think we're doing pretty good. Lucky, let's go. Let's go get some brekkie. So we are sitting here, just watching the world go by in this little tiny town. I actually really like this town. It has kind of a Cape vibe to it anyway. We just crushed a much needed lobster roll. I've actually wondered this. Are the vast majority of New Englanders into the cold lobster rolls or the hot ones? I think there's like a big controversy behind that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm on the fence. I like both. Anyway, we ate a cold one. It was solid, but we're chilling here waiting for the tide to come back in before we get back out on the, on the scene and do some more casting. But in the meantime, I'm going to share with you guys the story um, that was recorded, I think, in the early 1900s in uh, Provincetown or P-Town, which is like the tip of the Cape. Very fishy town. It used to be like the fishing capital of the world, arguably. And uh, I'll just kind of throw the story up right here. You can pause the video and read it. But it is just, it's a hoot. It's a hilarious story. And uh, I think that pretty much sums up New England fishing in general. Like people over here, they're hardcore. The weather can be nasty. Like today we woke up, it was cold. I imagine a lot of people out here fishing in the roughness, in the brutalness. Um, but anyway, I just found this story so funny and someone sent me this and I was like, that is unimaginable. So anyway, lobster roll done, story time done. We're gonna drive down the coast a bit, find some more rocky areas, some deep water. Time is really of the essence, so if we don't hit this at the right time, then we could miss a potentially good bite. I think Alex was saying their water starts coming back in right around 11 a.m. So we wanna get in the zone, in the spot, on the rock, make some cast right around 10.30. So should be good. Let's scoot on out of here and hustle. Even if you don't catch anything, this just looks good. Looks like it's got so much potential. You're at spot number two at the moment. This is a very interesting spot. It's like a monster rocky point. And from the aerial view, it looks like it could definitely hold some fish. So we're gonna give it a try. It's kind of a walk though. It's not a very safe walk either. Look at these rocks. This is sketchy. Nothing like holding a wiener dog and walking on some dodgy rocks with flip flops on. Oh yeah, this is definitely safe. Serious. Look at that. That thing goes in the wind. Come on, come on, I'm on. I got one. Yes, I do. Come on. Come on, jerk bait. Jerk bait fish. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Feels pretty good, dude. Feels all right. Landing this thing is going to be another challenge, though. What do we have? What is it? Oh, it's a nice striper. Hell yes. I'm going down. It's a pretty good one. Okay, risky, risking it, risking it for the biscuit. Ooh, okay, there we go, come here. Boat flip, yes, <laughs> we did it. That's a good one, man. Not a bad striper at all. Quality fish. Chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. Oh, wow, pretty solid fish. We're fishing probably one of the coolest spots I've fished in a long time. It's just this monstrous rocky point surrounded by kelp and current. It's freaking rad, dude. It's gnarly, it's pretty hard to fish, but I just knew with all this current, there'd have to be something on it. Sure enough, through the mega jerk bait, look at the size of this thing. And this guy played. Nice one, dude, solid little fat schoolie. Whoo, hell yeah, brother. 
Let's go! Get back down there. Little pig. Look at, there he goes. <laughs> there's just, there's nothing that beats that, man. It's like, this is stuff I'm not used to fishing. Heavy current, salt water in your face, kelp everywhere. I smell like crab booty hole, but we are catching fish. Let's keep going. Okay, so we are at spot number two. I'm just gonna try to yell as loud as I can because it's windier than a tit out here, but uh, yeah, we're at spot number two, which is this gorgeous little rock, and I'm throwing a mega jerk bait now. I, I found that the jerk bait obviously gets some good bites, especially in these riprap areas with a lot of rock and current. So I've upped my size. This is a, uh, I don't know, it's like a, it's a salt pro minnow. It floats, and I changed out the hooks, and I'm just fishing it on some heavier gear. So that's what that guy ate. Let's see if there's some more. Hell yeah, boy! There's another one! Yes! Another fish, it's a good one. Feels much better. Oh, he just jumped! <laughs> yes! This is so sick. Another striper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boat flippage in the kelp. <laughs> Dude! It's like, how are we getting this lucky? Like, do all rocks in Massachusetts have striper on them? This is so nuts. <laughs> Just a wee little dude. Oh, he released himself. Thank you for that. Salty stripes all day. Whoosh. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, oh my God. Oh jeez! He ate it right in the boat! <laughs> Dude, this is insane! This is crazy! Dude, he came up and ate like I was stunned! I was so mental! Incoming tide, you're right, dude. Oh my goodness. Mucho gracias. That is now three striper out of spot number two. That one ate right on my feet. That was the craziest eat I've had in a very long time. See you guy. Woo! Oh, I just got hit again. I just got hit again. Oh, he ate it again. Come on, come back for it. What the hell, dude? This is so wild. I just like, my big question is like, are they, are they like there? Or are they coming in, in and out? Or like, just like how many fish are in front of you right now? I just don't know. Or are they moving constantly around this rock? Like looking for good, good water? Oh wow, it's gushing now. We're out. Buggy. Buggy. Did you have fun today? Did you get some stripers? What a kick ass day that was. It just, this place continues to surprise me. Pull up to a rock, make a cast, catch a striper. Although those were some really good fish, we are still on the hunt and major prowl of some biggies, some giants. The first time I ever went to Massachusetts, or I guess New England in general, I had one of the most insane fishing days of my entire life. And that was with like, dozens of 20 pound stripers. So while that is so much fun and I enjoy that, I know what it truly can be here. And I know the uh, potential that this ocean can hold. But anyway, I decided to end today's video here in the grass as my dog pees and relieves herself. But I figured I'd close it all out because it's just been such a kick ass morning and evening. But I appreciate you so much. Let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite fishing memory story, whatever. I wanna hear some of you guys' tales, fishing tales, whether they be true or not. I just wanna, wanna hear about them, wanna read them. So anyway. I'm Peace and Not Sign Out. Thank you so much for sticking with it. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.